What is up, everybody? It is Laura Graves here, and um, I'm gonna be kind of going back and forth on some information and a little fun footage that I found. Um, I did try to shoot this in the local cemetery, which is, you guys know me enough already that that's where I've been filming, especially during this lockdown. Anyways, <clears throat> today is, we're going to talk about, right here, Scream. And not just Scream, Scream 5, uh, the new installment, and everyone's calling it Scream 5 when reality is we're not 100% sure on that just yet. But there's a lot of rumors and a lot of plot twists and ideas that everybody's been coming up with. So today, I just wanted to touch base on that. All right? Second thing is, guys, you know the drill. Hit that like button right here. Hit that subscribe button up here somewhere. And um, make sure you turn on that notification button so you know when I'm dropping a new video. And then, um, be kind and uh, leave a comment, y'all. All right, so before I get to going on this, um, I want to do an experiment. Since I'm still fairly new and I don't have a whole bunch of, you know, followers and all that. If we can get five, five, five likes on this video and at least two more subscribers I will as soon as I can do something really really cool for you guys video wise all right with that keep on digging I've been watching a lot of videos lately where there are fans like myself giving their perspective and their opinions and their thoughts and theories on what the outcome of the new installment of Scream is going to be. And um, some of them are radical and way out there, and some of them actually have good possibility. Um, things like Judy Hicks used to date Stu Mocker, and she's somehow involved. Uh, Sydney Prescott had a unwanted child from Billy Loomis and gave him up for adoption. Um, Jill Roberts never died except the fact that she was electrocuted and the amount of vol volume that she was electrocuted in um, fried her brain. Like, come on, let's be reasonable here. New update information is that the directors that have now acquired the rights to this film um, have been now following Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and two actors from the hit show Riverdale. Now they've gotten uh, Cole Sprouse, who plays Jughead, and Lily Rutherford, who is Betty. Now, <clears throat> uh, there is no proof that these two are actually involved in the film. Nothing has been confirmed yet. Of course, you all know the game. Um, <clears throat> Hayden Panettiere is a big hope for a lot of people. Everybody wants Kirby to come back. But you guys, again, this is a game. The entire franchise of this series here, all right, I'm talking one, two, three, four, Scream the TV series, including The Resurrection. It's all a game. Part of the game doesn't just involve the film, all right? 
part of the game is keeping everyone guessing because what happened after Scream was such a huge success was that they were already writing Scream 2 and they were trying to keep that out of the paws of people out on the internet when things were booming on the internet. Excuse me. You are about to die. So with faux scripts and ploys and faux information and rewrites upon rewrites and people getting fired and new things happening all the time, it's a guessing game. It's not just about who's going to be in it, who's going to be the killer, how many killers are there going to be, is it going to involve Sidney Prescott. It's not just a who done it. The entire process is a giant guessing game. Guys, I want you to keep that in mind when you hear about the fact that Hayden Panettiere has not been contacted so far to our knowledge. The fact that uh, David Arquette and Courtney R. Cox, Courtney R. Cox, oh my god, Courtney Cox Arquette. Should I keep that in? Anyways, so the fact that David and Courtney have been followed on Twitter or social media or whatever gives Lee away that they're part of the original ensemble cast that is going to continue the legacy. <clears throat> just because Hayden Panettiere has not been put on that list just yet doesn't mean that she isn't on the list. Um, again, it's part of the game. It's a guessing game. Now, <clears throat> part of the guessing game got fun for me here. And the fact that Lily Rutherford and Cole Sprouse from Riverdale, two actors who play specific people who have to deal with what? There's always a mystery involved, right? They're good at finding clues and figuring stuff out. Here's a twist. Those fans who know that Betty has a dark side knows that Lily Rutherford can very, very well be flipped into a bad character. <clears throat> this could be clues on who our killers are, guys. I'm not gonna, I'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen. There's obviously no concrete proof. I'm not a writer. I'm not part of the executive team. I have no say. And even if I was, again, I have no say. Now, here's the other thing. We are all, we're indoors. Yes, you're indoors. You over there, you're indoors. Even the dog, see? Here's the thing. We are quarantined. We are going to have to adjust, not just our thinking, but our film and movies and all the different genres are going to be tweaked from now on. This is a new this is a new era, all right? Uh, new set rules, new decade, new surprises, new game. Keep that in mind. With a new game, there's a possibility we could see something a little more closer to Scream Resurrection. Now, that had more of a Jordan Peele get out and you. Um, type of feel to it, which is part of the Scream franchise because of reinventing or breaking the rules and still being caught in that that moment, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think this is going to be a reboot. I don't think this is going to be a remake or a, a shriekwill, or a mockumentary, or anything of that nature. This is going to be the next generation within the Scream franchise. We've gone from Sydney in high school, college, which mirrored her previous predicament, <clears throat> to Hollywood in the third film, right? 
to going back to your roots on the fourth film where they were again trying to do a, a reboot or similar terms of a reboot within the genre of that particular franchise. Scream 5, 5. Think about it. No, seriously, think about this. The entire series is about reinvention, all right? Reinvention of horror genre, rules, survivors, what happens to the killers, suspects. All of that is going to be flipped like a coin, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to be fast, and it's going to be intense. This is going to be a good ride, a good, hold on, scare you so good ride. I feel that at this point, would it be anybody else who's currently doing this um, rights to scream would not um, have the decency and respect to carry on the tradition of the game as did Wes Craven or Kevin Williamson. But most of us already know that Kevin Williamson is now part of the executive production executive production or the executive producer not just a writer or anything it's going to be a completely different writer i'm sure kevin's going to kind of like mm, tweak it a little bit but if we get david and courtney kevin williamson maybe somebody on west craven's old crew who originally worked on not just any of the films but other films, including Scream or Nightmare on Elm Street or um, Hills Have Eyes or anybody who's worked with Wes on any of that stuff, who can take his style and take his um, initiative, and then you add the guys who did um, Ready or Not, which I have not seen yet. I want to. I've heard a lot of great stuff about it. But I feel like these guys are going to take this and they are going to go, okay, this is the godfather. Let's make the new capo. All right? I think it's in good hands. And that's it for now. Like, subscribe, comment, keep on digging. Oh my God, you guys won't believe what I just found. This is the creepiest thing. Speaking of Wes Craven, you guys, it is an armless, headless Freddy Krueger doll. And you can tell it's Freddy Krueger because A, the sweater, and B, look at the neck. What the? Let's see if we can find the head. That's creepy. Seriously?